I'm Dr. Steve Turpin. I'm a I'm the uh, general manager at PTS Optics here in Vancouver, Canada, and we are the um, Medmont distributor for North America. So we um, sell instruments not only in Canada but also in the U.S. and have been doing that for the last um, wow, it's almost 25. Um, years now. So if you do have a Medmont, um, chances are you got it from us and we really appreciate um, that you did that. And so tonight, what we wanted to do was kind of create a collaborative webinar opportunity um, between uh, wave contact lenses. And we've got Shirin Ayers, who, who kind of heads that group, um, and in Medmont. And we wanted to put together a program where we could share with you guys um, some information about um, WAVE and using the Medmont topographer to use WAVE. And, um, you know, we really think that uh, it's a really uh, robust um, system, especially for designing OrthoK lenses. With OrthoK um, becoming so much more popular and the uh, cases that uh, people are, or the patients that are coming in, um, to see you and, and asking you to fit them in ortho K, you know, we've got much more complex eyes that we're fitting, not just those spherical minus twos anymore. And so we have a really great um, opportunity to uh, have a speaker that um, speaks, you know, on the ortho K side of things all the time. Um, Dr. Anith Pile is, is a really great um, speaker in terms of both content and um, and just general delivery of information. I've been really impressed when I've when I've been hearing him speak. So he just recently, within the last um, couple of weeks, got his fellowship in the International Academy of Ortho K and Myopia Control. So so big congrats on that. He is also a fellow of the Scalero Lens Society. Uh, he's written tons of articles, lectured, like I said, on scleral lenses and ocular surface disease. He's a clinical adjunct professor at the Houston, or at the uh, yeah, Houston College of Optometry, where he went to optometry school. He's a co-owner of um, Evolutionary Eye Care and has a specific um, interest and you know kind of focus on anterior segment keratoconus ortho K. Obviously, uh, he's the president of the Harris County Optometric Society and the board of America, and he is on the board of American, uh, the American Academy of Orthokeratology and Myopia Control. So as you can see, he's, he's really involved. I'm kind of curious as to how he has time to do anything else based on everything that he does. So um, without further ado, I'm not going to um, spend too much time here. I'm going to let um, Anif take everything over and get the presentation started, and we can talk more at the end. So Anif, yeah, go ahead. Great. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction. And how I have time to do everything, uh, I make my partner work and then I make my wife do everything at home. And that's kind of how <laughs> I split my time. So I get to have fun and do things like this. So thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. Uh, I know it's a weekday evening. So listening to me for the next 40 minutes to an hour is probably not ideal, but I try to make it as fun as possible. All right, so I'm really excited about this topic because it talks about technology and it talks about ortho K, two of the biggest passions for me. So let's just get right into it. I wanna go ahead and share my screen. And you can tell I'm from Houston from my background. I'm a big Houston Rockets fan. And as you can imagine, it's been a rough couple of years for me. So hopefully there are some other Houston people that feel my pain. Okay. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk a little topography. We're going to talk a little custom ortho K with WAVE and how it integrates with Medmont. I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Boston Materials for making this event possible and having all of us together to have this discussion. And this is really incredible. So there is some perks to knowing me, okay, and to joining this webinar. For all of you that are in attendance for tonight's webinar, you're getting the new WAVE software, okay? That is a $3,000 value. Wow, I could not believe when Shereen told me about this. So that's that's incredible. Everything that we talk about today with WAVE's new software, you guys will have access to that. The WAVE team will contact you guys directly 
And all you have to do is stay till the end. You just got to listen to me for a little while. And if you can muster up the strength to listen to what I got to talk about tonight, you can get the new Wave software. So I'm so excited for all the attendees to get the new White Wave software and incorporate it into their clinical practice so you can start using it for your patients and start incorporating some of the pearls that I'll talk about tonight. So I was, I was so happy to see this promotion uh, available to all you guys tonight. All right. So two things I wanna highlight on today is technology and customization. That's really what Medmont and Wave integration is gonna talk about. It uses the most advanced technology incorporated with a customized approach to dealing with ortho -K and myopia control. And that's what your patients want. They want an expert, they want somebody who's using the most advanced treatment options, and they want you to let them know I am the best and that what you're providing me is the best for me. Customization is so important for patients. They want to feel special. They want to know that they're in the right place, but that you are taking care of them, unlike any other doctor, but also unlike any other patient. So we have the clinical expertise to deliver ortho -K, to deliver myopia control. We want to make sure that we're delivering the content appropriately where the patients know that. They want an expert. Make sure they know you are the doctor to provide it. And don't be shy to kind of boast yourself a little bit. Let them know that, hey, I've been doing this. I've been using advanced technology. I've been using custom software. They're going to be really impressed and they're going to refer other patients to you. So make sure that you are really talking about not only the technology, but also your expertise in the area. But more important than anything else with customization, you want to make sure the patient is the hero. You want to make sure that they are the ones that are getting the custom treatment approach. All right, so let's start a little bit with technology. The evolution of technology, I use that on purpose. My practice name is Evolutionary Eye Care. So of course I have to throw that in there a little bit, but technology changes. So if you walk into a practice that has stayed the same for the last 10 to 15 years, patients are gonna notice. They know when they're walking around in the world and they go into, the new Apple store, or they go into Best Buy, things are different than 10 years ago. They want to see that difference in their eye care provider. They want to make sure that you're advancing along because other doctors are as well. So make sure that not only just for a clinical aspect, but the perception that you're giving to the patient. So when they see that this is something different that they had from the previous eye doctor, they know that they're in the right place. They know that they're getting something not only different, but exceptional. And that's the embrace that we have to have with technology, not only from the clinical side, but from the patient perspective, uh, perspective side. And that's how we're going to give them an incredible experience, make sure they're walking away with saying, hey, this is my eye doctor for life. And going back to technology, if you're if one of the doctors that's on the left side of this graph compared to the right, they're going to, the patients are going to realize that, you know? Um, When's the last time you walked into a store and they're asking for, you know, a fax number or, you know, uh, taking things down in pen and paper when it could all be digitized? So that makes an impression on patients. Things have changed so much over the last few years. Our practices need to advance with that. And that goes for orthokeratology as well. So knowing that we can have a better experience for our patients, offering them the most customized option, but also the most advanced option and making sure we highlight that so the patients know that this experience is going to be different than any other office that they've been to. And, and just for fun, I Googled what was the best computer of 2000. And this is what showed up. This was the, the highest rated best computer of the year 2000. And what's so funny is uh, I used to sell computers and I remember selling these bad boys and I, I was so impressed by it. And fast forward 22 years, we can't be using the same technology. The most powerful computer that was here in 2020, it was a fraction of what we do now. Our smartphones can do much more than the most powerful computers from not only 20 years ago, from 10 years ago. Patients are used to that. They're used to having everything in the palm of their hands. They're used to technology advancing. They expect their doctor experience to advance with them. So make sure that we're letting them know 
hey, we are having the most advanced technology to give you the most customized approach. And if anybody has ever had a custom outfit done, you know what I'm about to say. It is so much different than off the rack. As a guy that loves making custom suits, or I shouldn't say I make them, but ordering custom suits, it is a different feel. It's something that once you have it, you'll never go back. And that's not just for suits, but for any outfit. And customers are going to appreciate that and willing to pay more. Most studies show that for anything that is purely customized to that individual, that not only can appreciate it, but return to that business more and pay a premium for it as well. And like I said, if you ever had that experience, you know, customization is where it's at. There's nothing like when you walk out of any type of business knowing that that product or service is tailored specifically to you. And here's just a small study that shows that. And this is across all industries, whether it's co clothing, footwear, furniture, eye care, any medical uh, um, medical area. If you make something that's customized to a patient, you deliver it as a customized service or product, patients are willing and customers are willing to pay a premium for it. So having advanced technology is a huge issue for patients because they expect it. And being customized makes the patient feel special and they're willing to pay a premium. And at the end of the day, that's what we all want. We want to feel special. We want to make sure that we have an amazing experience. We want to make sure that we're catered towards. And we, as providers, not only need to have the clinical expertise to do it, but make sure we let the patients know that we are delivering that service that's customized and at the most advanced technology that's available. And that's what our patients want. We want to feel important. So let's go out of our way to make sure these patients are feeling important. Let's get the most advanced technology. Let's get the advanced topography. Let's get the most customized software to make sure not only are we catering to that patient's specific needs and their specific eyes, but using technology that really is not incorporated in many other designs. It's not something that's off the shelf. It's, as you would say, bespoke. It's a bespoke uh, treatment plan for these patients. And if you've been practicing long enough, this cartoon definitely holds true. You can have the best clinical skills, but if you cannot relate to a patient how much you are investing in them and how much you care about them and what you are delivering in a way that they understand and take home and can repeat to their family members, then really everything you've done, it really doesn't doesn't affect them at all. They need to comprehend what you're saying. They need to know that you're cared, that you're empathetic, and that you are taking care of them. And the best way to do that is making sure you have the best bedside manner, being energetic. So the clinical skills, yes, are very important, but you got to make sure that you are relaying it to a patient so they understand, they trust you, and they want to keep coming back to you. We all have the clinical skills to deliver all the treatments that I'm gonna talk about today, but making sure that you invest to continuously pursue that growth and then relaying it to the patients that you are in the right place and that you are with an expert and that I'm gonna guide you to the results that you want. That's what our patients want. That's what they wanna hear. And that's what I hope after today's webinar, we can all impart to our patients. We wanna be custom designed. Our patients wanna be happy. They want everything specific for them pay attention to them, make sure that they're the superstar, they're the hero, and relaying that these treatment options are be custom for them is not only gonna make them happy, but it's gonna make them feel like they've never had any other experience like this and make sure other patients come to you as well. And when you do that, when you make sure that the patients are happy and have a custom treatment for them, well, those kiddos, they're gonna bring out the big bills to come to your office. All right. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's talk about topography. Let's talk about ortho K, the reason we're all here today. I'm gonna to start a little bit with the topographical portion. And this is what the Medmont Meridia looks like. It's a very similar footprint to the previous model, the E300, it's a little different in dimensions, but overall a very similar topographer from how it fits into your office. Now, the difference is going to be the data you can collect. So it has a amazing capability to gather so much information. We'll start with the repeatability. 
to 0.1 diopter repeatability for accuracy. So you can be confident that the instrument itself is getting uh, great data. The power range up to 100 diopters. So pretty much any patient that's walking into your clinic, you'll be able to uh, image and get accurate results from the topography. And this is the big one, the analyzed point greater than 100,000 analyzed points. That's a big jump from the E300. So they're getting a lot more data, a lot more accurate, a lot more repeatable. And we know that's so important when we're doing ortho -K. Every single data point is crucial when you're making these small changes. We're talking about microns here. So the more data points we can have, especially in a custom software design like Wave, the better our results we can, we can have and the better our patients are gonna be in the end. And the high resolution imaging is going to be fantastic. I'm going to show you some images of this. It's been really incredible to show patients what the maps we are taking, what they look like. They're absolutely beautiful. And I'm not going to harp on it too much here. I want to show you what those pictures look like. Now, there are two different versions. There's a classic and professional version. And let's just blow this up a little bit. The biggest difference between the classic and pro, and in my opinion, is really anterior segment imaging and some of the dry eye suite information that you get from them. So they both work pretty well as a topographer. I think that you can do wonderful cases with orthokeratology with either. But as you look down the bullet points and the differences from the Pro version, which is on the right side of the screen, you start to see there's meibomian gland imaging, fluorescein imaging, tear meniscus height, um, dry eye screening reports. So a lot of ocular surface disease add-ons, also imaging capture that's, that's more available for the pro version compared to the classic. Now, if we're just talking strictly topography, they both work very well, but I like having that pro version because I can do a topography on a on a post ortho K patient, and then take fluorescein images of the ortho K retainer right there on the same instrument, and then I can view everything together, and it makes my clinical decision making a lot better. And this is what a Meridia topography looks like, and you can just see how beautiful it is. You get to see the color image, you get the lids and lashes in the image. Luckily, our, our techs are really good at taking images, so they were outside of the, the topographical capture. But you see how different that is than other topography captures. It just looks much better. You get to see it in C2, basically with the, the eye in the capture. You get to see some of the conjunctival tissue. And if you take off the color image, you can actually visualize the placebo rings to see if there's any dry eye issues going on. Now, if you look down below, you'll see a plot of the, of the actual power ranges, the K power ranges, and this is going across different millimeters. So the gray version at the bottom, and I'm not sure, maybe Steve, you can um, come in here real quick. Can you see my mouse as I kind of move it up and down? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, absolutely. great. Yeah, so this gray uh, box here is where the topography interprets the pupil to be. Now, you got to remember, the pupil that the topography inter uh, interprets, it's not gonna be quite exact. The pupil is gonna change as you take the image. It's based off of a contrast difference um, from the cornea. So uh, take that with a grain of salt, but at least it's some measurement that you have, but you can see how the keratometry values change as you go from center to the periphery. And that's a good plot. Uh, the vertical axis here, the um, the x-axis here, so I'm sorry, the y-axis here shows the keratometry ranges. And then down here at the bottom, it shows the distance from the center um, of the image. So you can see how that variation changes as you go from center to periphery. Out here on the side panel, now you can have all the attributes that you want to design not only ortho K, but corneal RGPs, clinical lenses. This is completely customized. And that's what's so great about the MedMont topographer. You can have all that data that you want pre-populated so you can see it in one image. So you can see here, I got the flat K, steep K is already there. And then I don't want to do the math. So I just have the Delta K already calculated for me. So I don't have to put out a calculator or do it in my head. It'll show me what the corneal stigmatism here is. It'll have eccentricity values show out. There are some indices that are uh, really good to look at for 
evaluating corneal ectasias, that's the IS, SI, SAI, and SRI. I won't go in depth with those today um, as they're, they're more towards keratoconus or the corneal ectasias. Then you'll see the pupil width. And then what's really important is that last value. That is something that I customize to have added on on every topography when I, when I see a patient. It'll actually show the sagittal difference or the elevation difference in a bested sphere at a eight millimeter cord. And I set that specifically. You can change it to a nine millimeter, seven millimeters, whatever you want, depending on your ortho K design. I personally recommend eight. But what it will do, it'll take what that difference is at that specified cord and the steep and flat meridian. So you can see what that elevation difference is. And if it dictates wanting to have a spherical, toric, or as we'll talk about with wave, G-SIM versus R-SIM versus freeform designs. So that's a really valuable piece of information to have right off of just taking topography that you don't have to calculate on your own. All right, so we talked a lot about what the Medmont looks like. Let's talk a little bit about the Wave. So this is the new Wave software. And just to go back, we've got to, we've got to start where we, uh, the original design, right? So this is the original Wave software, shows the tear, uh, tear film profile right there on the top and at the bottom is the, uh, the RGP profile. And you have kind of um, four images onto the right that shows not only a simulated fluorescein pattern, but an imported corneal topography and anterior and posterior surface. So this is what the previous wave design looked like. Now, when we get into the new wave, it just looks so much cleaner. Before I even get into the differences and some of the other attributes that you can get into the, the interface, I walked by this image at GSLS when Shireen was there and presenting it. And my jaw dropped. I was so impressed with how clean it looked, how just new age it looked. I was like, all right, we're, we're getting software that's now ready for 2022. I was, I was so impressed. And I told her right then, I got to get this tomorrow. Make sure you send me the new wave software because I want to start designing with this. It, it is such a difference going from here and, and, and no shade. Okay, I've used this for years and there's a lot of benefits to it. But when you go see this interface, I'm sure most of our existing wave, uh, wave docs will really appreciate it. So let me dive into a little bit of the differences. So obviously the RGP and tear from uh, profile are, are flipped. So the top layer is what the RGP looks like on the eye. And this is not just a cartoon, by the way. So if you make parameter changes, so for example, if I change the center thickness or the edge thickness, you'll see that image actually changes as well. So it's making those modifications real time as you make it into the software. Down at the bottom is the tier, uh, tier from profile. It looks very similar to the previous software, but there's other ways that we can now manipulate. And I'll show that to you later. Still have the quad map. Um, now it's up in the upper left. So you can still see the fluorescein map with the front curvature and back curvature looks like in addition to the imported topography. Underneath that, you have the manual modification. So you can make changes that affect the entire design 360 degrees, or you can do a meridian at a time, or even go quadrant specific. And the amount that you're changing can be modified uh, with that modification increment 1x, 2x. So you can make incremental changes as big as you want or as small as you want. What I really like about uh, this interface is everything's really in one place. So if you look at the upper right, right before it says night lens, so kind of where my mouse is here, you can see that you can manipulate the center thickness, the edge thickness, and the overall diameter right here. You don't have to go into a configuration setting. It's all done in one place. It makes less clicks happen to make sure that you can get in and out of your design a lot quicker. Not only is it gonna look better, but it's gonna make you so much more efficient in designing as well. All the way to the right, you can actually insert clinical information. You can um, select which type of lens materials you want. Uh, if you want hydropeg, plasma treatment, if you want dots, no dots, et cetera. If you want any other clinical notes, you can always enter that into the WAVE software. That's the same with the new and the old software. So uh, the biggest difference here is not only how the look of it is, 
but also just how much you can change from one page. And the next thing I really want to go into is this big red arrow, the modification area. So one of the biggest issues with new wave docs is they're so used to different nomenclature versus the wave design. So if you come in and you've done ortho K for years, you're used to base curve, alignment curve, reverse curve, peripheral curves. That's where we're used to modifying. Hey, you know, my, my design is not centering properly. I need to flatten my alignment curve or I need to change. I, I need to steepen my reverse curve, what have you. Well, with wave, we talk a, a different lingo. We talk about plink, uh, pink dots. We talk about blue dots. And that's a little bit different than what we're used to. So it, it can take a little bit of a learning curve just to get used to the jargon itself. Now, that is why I really like this modification. So if you click that box, the mo uh, manual modification, it'll show this window. And now it'll actually make changes in the terminology that most doctors are used to. So if you need to make changes in the alignment, in the reverse, in the base curve, or the optic zone diameter, you can do that without having to worry about blue or pink or red balls. This is now the same terminology that you're used to. And it shows you exactly what's happening. And these infographs at the top are in that order for a reason. The most likely change you're gonna make, and most doctors that have done orthokeratology for a while will probably agree, the alignment zone is probably gonna make the most percentage of changes. The second most is probably reverse curve, then base curve, and then maybe optic zone diameter. So they're in that order for a reason. So when you look at that alignment zone, you can see if I want to increase the sagittal depth of the overall system, you can see that it's manipulating the pink ball here, and it's going to actually steepen that curve to raise the entire system up. But you don't have to think about that anymore. You can just say, I want to increase the sagittal depth. What do I do at the alignment zone? You click this box, it'll do it. And the box next to it say, hey, I want to decrease the sagittal depth. Same thing. It'll show you. I'm manipulating the pink ball. I'm going to be flattening that area. But again, it takes that thinking out of it. It makes you make decisions a lot quicker and in terminology that you're familiar with. So you can make these changes in the ways that you're familiar with other designs. And you can even select the micron change that you're doing with that drop down box, 5, 10, 15 microns, however much you need to do. You can even select the quadrant. So you can make 360 degree changes. You can make um, one half, which is meridional changes or quadrant specific. So you still have the customization with this tool, but it makes the clinical judgment so much easier. You can decide, I want to flatten the alignment zone and you can decide by how much and where to incorporate it. Now, you can still do the same thing on the reverse curve as well. And now you can see that the cartoon changed to blue, and that's because that's the blue ball that's being manipulated here. But same concept. If I want to increase the sagittal depth here, you see that curve is now being steepened a little bit more. So you increase the sagittal depth of the entire system to create that reverse curve chain that you want. And it shows you what's happening, but without you having to specifically manipulate a tear film profile. Same thing if you want to flatten, that'll decrease the sagittal depth a little bit, and it shows you what's happening to the lens when you make those modifications. Again, this is a micron change, and you can decide how many microns you want to change. And the meridians can be specified as well, whether you want to make a 360-degree change, this meridional, or quadrant-specific. When we go into this specific tab, you will see as you go from alignment to reverse curve, the amount that is allowed to change goes lower and lower. And that's on purpose. As you make changes, the more peripheral you are, the more micron change you likely need to make. The closer you are to center, the less micron change you need to make. So a 10 to 15 micron change might be very significant at the reverse zone or the blue ball in this case, but a 20, 25 micron change might be made uh, need to be made at the pink ball or in the periphery. So it's very rare that you need to go beyond this um, 
pre-selected micron change that's in the drop-down box. And that's the reason why, it's because the further out you go, the less micron change you need to have a clinically significant effect. And then we go into base curve. So most ortho K docs know the base curve, usually we don't have to modify too much. The topographies are really good at getting central data. So they're usually pretty, pretty on point in getting that data accurate. It's the periphery where it can get a little bit tricky. So that's why it's third in the list. You're usually going to uh, manipulate the alignment zone. Second in the list is reverse curve. And third is base curve. But the WAVE software still allows you to modify it. And it still shows you what's happening. So you can still steepen the base curve or uh, flatten the base curve. And it shows you what's exactly happening that. Um, at that red ball. And with the base curve, it's not a micron change here. It's going to actually show you the diopters. So if you're under or over correcting by a certain amount, you can select, I need to change by 0.5 diopters, one diopter, et cetera. Again, it makes the clinical decision making so much easier. So for alignment and reverse zone changes, there are going to be micron changes which makes sense. It's going to be how we're fitting the cornea. I want to make changes in microns. With the base curve, it's usually over under correcting treatment issues. So a dioptric change makes more sense. There's, it's eliminating how much thinking you have to do while still having that customized treatment approach. And then last is the optic zone diameter. Very rare do you have to usually change this, but luckily you're in a customized software design and you can manipulate it if you need to. So you can increase or decrease that optic zone diameter. So if you're doing, say, a refractive error correction, so someone who's not an adult who doesn't want to have LASIK and is interested in ortho -K, you may want an optic zone diameter that's a little bit larger to reduce halos and glare. And if it's a young patient, a five or six year old who's a high myope and you want to be aggressive with myopia control, you may bring in that optic zone diameter a little bit more to enhance that peripheral myopic focus. So all of these parameters can be manipulated. And now you don't have to do the blue, red, white, sorry, the blue, red, pink ball manipulation. You can make these changes in the modification area in a terminology that's a, a lot more acceptable for most doctors. And I've really loved this, this tab because not only is it easier to understand, but it shows you exactly what's happening. All right, so I, I went through what the MedMont and what the WAVE software looks like. Let's do some live demos. Let's see what happens when I actually do an ortho -K design. So let me get out of the PowerPoint issue. Uh, sorry, the PowerPoint presentation. Let's bring up an actual MedMont topography. All right. We got a lot here. And, and Steve, if you can just let me know that this is being shared and everybody can see it. Yeah, it looks great. Wonderful. You know, you know what? I probably didn't even need to click on this. I think I already had it preloaded, but that's okay. All right. So let's start from the beginning. This is a MedMont E300 topography. So you can see the differences. It's a black and white image. You see a little of the lids and lashes here. So this is where we started. And this is a topography I had for several years. Now, fast forward to what a MedMont Meridia topography looks like. And you can see the difference. It's just a much higher resolution image. The entire cornea is captured here. Now, granted, that's a little bit with how much our techs have gotten better with taking topography, but the topography itself just looks so much better. It looks so much advanced. You can see conjunctival tissue. You can see the reflections of placido disc and tear film issues a lot better with the new MedMont Meridia. So if I had to choose on designing between here and there, there's really no question. I'm gonna have a lot more accurate result with this topography. So this is what the Meridia looks like. And I mentioned this in the PowerPoint, but here are the attributes area. And again, you can customize this. So you can add if, uh, eccentricity values, which I have, you can add HVID, you can add a plethora of things. And this is what I decided to have for, for my particular clinic. I wanna know what the flat and steep K is. I want the Delta K to be auto-calculated. I want to know what the eccentricity looks like. I like to have these ectasia indices just to make sure that nothing's really um, 
outside the normal. And then really important to me is the sagittal depth difference at the eight millimeter cord. That helps me evaluate what kind of design I want. If I'm above 20 to 25 microns, I'm gonna most likely go to a G-SIM design or a geometric symmetric design and wave. If it's less than that, I, I know I have probably a good result with an R-SIM or rotationally symmetric design. I will say probably 90, 95% of my patients are in a G-SIM design. Once you start doing these topographies, you'll see there's a big elevation difference at that eight millimeter cord, even regardless if there's a lot of refractive cylinder there. Again, you'll see this map down at the bottom that shows the keratometry values and they'll plot it out over um, the entirety of the cornea. So you can see what it looks like in the periphery versus the central cornea. All right. So that's what the topography looks like. And the one thing that I like is to look at the different maps in that mod. So I can go from axial to, to tangential, just from this prop box to refractive power. Now, when designing an ortho K design, I'll really lean on the axial power. That's what I wanna see. What kind of stigmatism do I have? And I'll look at these attributes to make sure that the K values are not out of range, they're not overly steep or overly flat, what the, uh, the delta K is to make sure my refraction is pretty close to the corneal cell, what the eccentricity looks like, average is about 0.5 to 0.6 for eccentricity, so I want to make sure I'm not too far out that range, not unlikely that the flat eccentricity is a little, uh, sorry, a little higher absolute value number, but a little flatter than the steeper um, E value would be a little little um, lower in absolute value than the 0.5, 0.6 average number. And then at that, again, like I mentioned, the sagittal depth difference, I wanna make sure that what is that difference on a best fit sphere at that eight millimeter cord. So that's what I'll look at. Initially, I'll have an actual power map. I'll look at those attributes. And then once I go into post-treatment, that's when I'll really start utilizing all these different maps from axial to tangential to refractive. Um, that, I'll use all of those on, on post-treatment follow-up. So let's maybe pull up an ortho-K patient. Here we go. And there's a lot of images that are pulled up. You know what? I probably had that already preloaded, but that's fine. You guys will see all the data that we had here. So this is a, an initial topography. Now, one thing I do like um, with the MedMom Meridia is you can actually call out to action certain things on the image, but you can also delineate what's baseline and what's not. So for example, this patient came in for an ortho K evaluation. I couldn't design off this topography. There's the lid's in the way, it's not ideal. So I, we took a lot of images and instead of just you know, kind of remembering which one I use, I can actually mark which one was my baseline. And you can see lids and lashes out of the way, lawless artifacts. So I can already go into categories and just mark which is baseline, post ortho K, post op if you're doing other treatments. So all of this is customizable of how you want to mark them up. So I like to have the baseline, that's the right eye. Here's the left eye, again, a great image, lids and lashes out of the way. I'm sorry, here's my actual baseline. Lids and lashes out of the way. So when I start to make a design, I like to use the difference map. So this patient had a lot of visits and uh, we took fluorescein image, I'll show you that in just a second. But when I look at the last time we saw them, I like to do difference maps here. And if I can move this out the way, there we go. Go into view and compare. Now I can see the baseline image on the top left. I can see what that patient topography looks like on the bottom left, and then what that difference map looks like on that central right. So I like to look at the tangential power map first, just to see how the lens is centering. I want to make sure that the shape is proper. And that's what the tangential map is all about. It's all about shape. Is it centering properly? I wanna make sure that I got that peripheral uh, plus ring right around that pupil area and a nice blue ring centrally in that pupil. 
That white ring that I'm outlining here is what the topography is interpreting as a people. Remember, that can be variable just depending on the lighting conditions. And it's based on the contrast difference from the iris to its surrounding. So take that with a grain of salt. Sometimes the topography can measure a little smaller than average. So if you see a 1.5 millimeter pupil, you know, hey, you probably have a lot a larger pupil in a young in a young patient, and that peripheral myopic defocus is, is likely being induced. So looking at this, this looks great. It's properly centered. I'm getting a nice, robust peripheral plus ring. I, I'm so happy with the shape of this. So the tangential power map looks beautiful. And then what I'll usually do is go to a refractive power map. This gives me a good visualization of the treatment zone. So all I'm focusing on here is that blue circle. I wanna make sure it's well-centered over the pupil and that I'm getting a good refractive outcome. This looks very well-centered. Now, when you do ortho -K with kids, most of us know a Manual, I'm starting to say manual, but a refraction of ferropter can be tough. Retinoscopy is definitely your friend, but if you're not as good as ret, like, like myself, and I uh, refer to my partner who's much better than I am, it's good to have some objective data. So I use this refractive map all the time, especially with a kiddo that I know is just going to be all over the place when they're behind the ferropter. So if I come in and I know that this patient is a you know, minus five or minus six, I can go right here and just say, yep, hey, I corrected. And this is where it's gonna show me. Yeah, al almost mi minus 575 of myopia and it's very spherical. So I know before I walk into the room, the amount of myopia that I'm correcting. It's a good objective data point to have. So you can be confident before you even see the patient, am I getting the refractive outcome that I want? And then, when I switch into the tangential mode, am I getting the good myopia control effect that I want as well? And again, in the tangential power, really focusing on the red ring, making sure it's centered well, making sure I'm getting some of that red ring in that pupil area to induce that peripheral myopic defocus. And then I'll switch into the refractive power mode, find out how much myopia did I actually correct? Am I getting a nice uniform blue circle to make sure I'm inducing that refractive error correction that I want and, and that it's well-centered, not causing any induced astigmatism. And this, this, looks, this looks wonderful. The other thing that I really liked about the Medmont Meridia is now if I'm troubleshooting, I can't always just go by topography. So if I'm having an issue, I want to see what the retainers look like on the eye. Well, I can take fluorescein images now on the eye as well. So this is a, a horrible image. I, I, this is actually a different patient, but you can see here, we put fluorescein into the eye, have the patient look straight ahead, and we can see most likely too much fluorescein here, but we can see what that design looks like. And we've taken several images here. That's a little too low. I can actually adjust the contrast here to give us a little better view. So now we can see not only what the topographer shows us post-treatment, but also what the ortho K retainer looks like on the eye. So I have both pieces of information in one instrument. And that makes making clinical judgments so much easier. I'm not going back and forth between, say, my one cloud or another slit lamp imaging software. Everything's in one place. So if I'm calling consultation, if I'm using a a different type of ortho K design, or if I'm designing with WAVE, I can see what does the retainer look like, what does my topographical image looks like, and I can make those clinical decisions all in one place. And these are still images, but you can also take video images as well. So if you're ever calling WAVE and, and needing some help, sometimes it can help to have video images. So you, instead of having a static image, you can have a dynamic video so they can see what that retainer looks like on the eye. And a question I get a lot is, what do I rely on more? Do I rely on more what the fluorescein images looks like or the topography? Hands down, I, I go to the topography. That's, that's what I go by. That shows me what's truly happening while the patient is sleeping, while the retainers, the eye, you know, the patient's blinking, they're at the slit lamp, they're standing upright. It's not gonna be the same as when their eyes are closed when they're laying down at bedtime. So if I'm deciding between the two, I'll definitely lean much more heavily on the topographical interpretation. 
So that's what the MedMon software looks like. Let's look at the new Wave software. Move this up here. And I'll actually just, I think I have one already open. Yeah, here we go. Great. So you can see the, the little differences. The RGP thickness profile is on the top and the tier layer profile is on the bottom. But the interface just looks a lot smoother. You have the quad view of the floor seed map front and back surface curvature, as well as the topography that's uh, uh, coming in from your MedMont topography. So a couple of changes. I mentioned the modification area, but in addition to that, if you're used to wave, you're going to make changes by clicking up or down on blue, red, and pink balls, which you can still do. It's just different. You're going to click on the ball and you can go up, down, and make whatever modifications you want. You can also say how many micron changes you want, 1x all the way to 8x. One thing I love is they now incorporated a 2x. So it used to be 1x, 4x, and 8. Well, you can go halfway in between with 2x. I really love that. So you can click however much you want to change, click whichever ball you want and go up and down. You can also move horizontally as well. Now, if you're not a clicker and you want to make drastic changes, you can now drag and drop. So you don't have to click up or down anymore. You can make vertical and horizontal changes all at once and place it wherever you want. And the software will automatically show you where those nodal points change. So again, making clinical decisions so much quicker. You don't have to click eight, four, sorry, eight, 12 times. You can just say, hey, I'm gonna grab this blue ball, see where it's going. It shows me the position. Uh, if you look above the tear film layer, it'll show you the changes you're making and you can drop it wherever you want. And it'll make those changes real time and the RGP will actually change above as well. And on to the right, you can make changes to the lens type, the material, the marking. So if you go down, you can even make go from freeform to GSIM right here in the same in the same screen. Go from GSIM to RSIM, and you'll see the tier layer profile has changed. You're not going to configuration settings. Everything's right there. You can make changes in material, add coatings, hydropeg, etc. If you want dots, and if there's any other clinical notes, you can incorporate that here as well. So the best thing about that is everything is in one screen. And now everything's in your control as well. No clicking up and down if you don't want to. You can go up, down, left, right, just with the freedom of your mouse. And modification area, if you're new to Wave, this is a lot easier to understand of making troubleshooting changes as well. So that's what the actual MedMon software looks like and what the Wave software looks like. All right. Let me go back to the PowerPoint here. We're wrapping up. I want to give a big shout out to the AOMC. This organization has been fantastic for me. I've learned so much from my colleagues that are members, and I have the privilege to serve on the board. If you have an interest in ortho -K and myopia control, it really is a no-brainer. This is the organization to join. All the doctors are so passionate about this subject there eager to not only learn more about myopia control and ortho-K, but make sure that they're spreading information to our colleagues. So please join AOMC. I'm sure I can put it in the chat, the, the link. And if you thought today's presentation was, was great, well, I got news for you. Vision by, Desi Vision by Design is gonna be even better. This is the Ortho-K meeting. Uh, everybody uh, that's sponsoring this lecture, Shireen, um, in addition to Steve, I'm sure we'll be there, is the Ortho-K meeting. It's where doctors learn the most about orthokeratology and all the new myopia control treatment options. Uh, the lectures are fantastic, so I highly encourage, if you can make it out, this is the meeting to go if you have an interest in Ortho-K and myopia control. And last but not least, if you have any questions, this is the time. And my contact information is here. That is my personal email and uh, my personal IG. I post fairly frequently about ortho -K cases. So if you have questions, that is a good way to get hold of me as well. And with that, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time on a weekday evening to listen to me discuss about ortho -K and the new technology that's available. 
And I'm so happy that Wave and Medmon has offered that wonderful promotion where you can get the new Wave software completely free. Again, the Wave team will reach out to you. And hey, Steve, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, throw it back to you if there's any questions. Sure, that was great. And that was uh, fantastic. I really appreciate um, you taking the time to put that together and kind of showing um, us all about, you know, using the Medmont and using the Wave software. I'm not seeing any questions in the, the question um, box right now. So I'll let people kind of um, get to that. But I do have a question for you. And yep. that is, you know, in a world where you have choices, you know, Wave isn't the only custom um, lens designing software out there. The Medmont's not the only topographer out there. Um, but I just kind of am curious uh, to ask you, what kind of attracted you to, to both of them? And it may be, you know, it's okay to answer, um, you know, in with some of the information that you already already put forward, but initially before you um, use this stuff, what kind of uh, made you decide, you know, that, that kind of is the, the thing that sells it for me? That's a great question. So when I first started out and opened the practice, I, I did not start with custom software and I had Wave give me a demo and I remember feeling overwhelmed. I was like, this is too much. This is going to take me too long to design. And uh, I actually did. And I used some of the other uh, other designs and they worked well for a while. And the, the turning point for me is as our myopia control clinic expanded, we're getting a lot more referrals. And unfortunately for me, or fortunately, I'm not getting a lot of minus two miles walking through the door. Most of my patients are you know, minus six, minus seven, minus eight, two doctors. So it, it's complicated cases that I just couldn't properly treat with other designs. And I knew I needed to make that switch where I need to have something that's custom designed for these patients because they're, they're complicated cases. I need to be a little bit more in control. And I needed to, to be honest, I needed to gain a little bit more knowledge before I was ready to get into WAVE. Now, what's great now is WAVE has done such a great job into making everything so much more accessible to all the doctors where it's easier to make troubleshooting changes, to make design changes. Uh, when I first started, I just remember feeling so overwhelmed. If, if that new wave software was there now, I probably would have jumped in right from the right from the bat. But when maybe make that switch to go into pretty much 95% customized software is that th those are the patients that are walking through. Perfect. Hey, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It looks like we do get, have some questions now. Now, are, uh, are you able to open up the question and answer? Uh, yeah. Let's so. see. Uh, what are some good techniques to get those lashes out of the way with the MedMod? Yeah, that can be tough. So number one, when you're if you're using multiple people to acquire an image and you're like opening the lids up, you need to know you're going to dry that cornea out. So Make sure you got good preservative free artificial tears on handy. So before you start opening the lids up wide, get the lubricating drops in. Because the last thing you want is, all right, lids and lashes out the way, but the placido discs are just smeared and it's not accurate anyway. So get the eye lubricated. And what and, and my techs do all of this. So they have been really great. Now, I've trained them in the beginning, but now they're much better than me because they're the ones doing it on a daily basis. But the techniques that have helped, with these kind of large cone, large cone topographers is having the patient not necessarily be straight ahead, but have the head tilted in a meridian where you can get a little bit closer under, uh, under that brow. They're still looking straight ahead, so they're fixating, but you're just moving their head slightly off axis. And then grabbing maybe a Q-tip to actually lift that lid, the upper lid out of the way. You don't wanna use your fingertips because if you're like me and you got nice fat fingers. Uh, they're going to push the patient out. So using a fingertip or uh, I'm sorry, a Q-tip to elevate that upper lid out of the way. And then for the lower lid, you actually don't want to grab at the lash mark. You want to grab down at the cheek and then actually pull down that way. And that gives you a lot better. Image. And it's going to take time. My, my staff will tell you uh, when they come in for an ortho K evaluation, they're not going to just accept what's there. They know that I need pristine topography. So if 
Their lash is in the way. Their lid's in the way. They're going to keep trying. They're going to keep putting lubricating drops. It's worth taking those 10 images because you get one shot at that baseline. So you want to make sure, make sure it's great. And I've had that question before. You know, I show these images of really great topographies where lids and lashes out of the way and a six-year-old and they say, come on, Annette, that's, that's, not, that's not realistic. Kids are just this finicky. They're not going to get that all the time. Well, we try. They're there for a while. And if I can't get a good topography where I'm confident I can make a great custom design, then maybe they're just not ready for it. Okay, quite yet. And I've had that conversation before. Because when you go into Wave or any custom software design, that data is so important. So if you have garbage in, you have garbage out, and it's not worth having that customization because you're not giving them true data. You got to have that data right on baseline. So taking that extra time, having them come back for multiple visits, we've done that. And it's worth it in the end because I'd rather address that issue right up front than having, gosh, 10 or 12 remakes. Um, yeah. Uh, from my perspective, just before you get on to the other question, I couldn't, uh, I mean, for us, you know, with us using Medmont um, images to design our lenses as well, um, the ones that we manufacture, it's, I couldn't agree more with, uh, you know, quality baseline maps being the most crucial part, because like you said, if you're, um, if you've got garbage in, you got garbage out and you're, everybody's up, everybody's um, not having a good time when uh, you can't get a lens to do what you want it to do, right? That's right. They're coming to see you as the expert. They're coming to see you as the person that knows the most and giving the best patient experience. Well, nothing's worse than seeing you 20 times for decreasing that patient experience. Yeah. All right. So looks like a couple more. When would you choose a free form over the uh, G-SIM lens? Oh, Andrew. Yeah. Hey, that's a great <laughs> question. We don't have enough time to go into that. Um, the, and a lot of doctors have different opinions on that. And I will say I used to do all free form. And I've had discussion with colleagues, and Dr. Ken Mahler, who is a fantastic ortho -K practitioner. He's probably convinced me a little bit more to go into G-SIM design uh, over free form. I will say the biggest thing is looking at that elevation difference map. So if you're greater than 20 microns, you have a customized software that can give incredible results. Go into GSIM right away. Uh, it's very rare that I use the RSIM design. Um, now going into free form, that's when things are a little bit more asymmetric, a little irregular. Free form is great. I've had great results with it. It just gets a little bit tricky once you start troubleshooting, because then you got to know, okay, what, interpretation that the topographer makes. So uh, a lot of doctors go free from right off the bat. Like I said, I was one of them. It's, 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 a, it's a varied opinion and probably too much to go into today. But I think the biggest thing is to decide whether you're going RSIM versus GSIM. And if that micron difference is greater than 20 microns, I would definitely go to GSIM. Or yeah, if I could just say thank you to everyone who attended tonight. I really appreciate it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it impacts your clinical practice. I gave you my contact information. Please feel free to reach out to me directly. I want to thank Medmont and Wave for allowing me to do this uh, with Boston Materials. And I hope everyone has a great night and, and learned a little bit and had some fun along the way. Well, thank you guys too. And um, we'll be sending follow up emails. So uh, if you guys are interested, um, on Waveside, then we'll make sure we get you set up. And if you're interested in Medmont side, we'll make sure we get you to the right folks as well. So with that, we'll uh, end the webinar and sign off. And yeah, thanks everybody for attending. We really appreciate your attention and time and uh, wish you the best of luck with your custom ortho. Okay, thanks. Thank you everyone. Good night.